Hello, I'd like to walk you through initial character creation using the Pathfinder 2nd Edition rules for our next campaign. You will go to the web address that I provided in our Discord link, and you should show it should show up with Test World, or when we actually get the game, it'll say the actual world. Um, you will select the user name, and you will type in the password that I gave you, then click Join Game Session. And I am not going to save that password. Okay, here you get a chance to pick your color um, that you want for your text and stuff like that. So I'm going to, it doesn't matter what color you pick. And we're just going to click save. Um, over here on the right hand side, it did pop up um, a thing from Dice So Nice where you can configure your 3D dice that you want to use. You can um, pick the color of your dice, uh, preferences, any special effects, that type of thing. Um, I'm just going to leave it as default. Since we're here for character creation, you're going to go to Actors. You will see a folder that says Player Characters. And if you open it up, you will see the... Right now it says new and a whole bunch of people. Well, I'm going to click on the new test. That's the one I'm using for this guest account. You will click on the new one with your name. Notice if I click on new Dan, I don't get any information in here. Okay? So the only one you're going to be able to make actually any changes to is the one that I have linked to you. So it's fairly easy, um, just like the pa Pathfinder 2E core rules. You start out with tins and all of your abilities, and then you go through, select your ancestry, heritage, class, background, and add your extra bonuses and stuff. So um, it's really straightforward. So first thing we can do is you can change your name. Um, Gimlord. Lord. Change his name to Gimlard. Okay. Um, and notice it changed over on the right-hand side. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select his ancestry. So I'm just going to click the little plus sign. And then it's going to pop up all of the applicable ancestries that you can choose. Please note that some of these are legendary and rare and uncommon. And we do have some restrictions on the rares and more rare than that. Um, I'm going to make him a dwarf. So all i got to do is I just drag the dwarf onto his ancestry. And if there's any particular things you get from your ancestry, um, it will pop them up here. So I am going to click give him a pistol. And if you notice, that pistol was added to my inventory. Okay, that's in addition to the wealth that you're going to get to start. So I'm going to go back to my character. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick his heritage. Okay, and you can filter. Um, you notice, yeah, I can have a dwarf ancestry and a cavern elf heritage, but I'm going to go with a straight, I'm going to search for the different dwarf ones. I'm going to give him the forge dwarf heritage. Um, if you have the book, um, you could actually read what the heritage are for the core ones. If you want to learn more about them, you click on the words. It'll pop up. Here are the forge doors. Remarkable adaptation to hot environments. This grants fire resistance equal to one half your level, minimum of one. And you treat environmental heat effects as if they are one step less extreme. So that's the one I am going to drag over. I'm going to take the icon. I'm going to drag it over to his heritage. Okay, normally if you were doing this at the table, um, you would be assigning your boosts. So notice that the dwarf gets boost in con and wisdom, and he has a flaw in charisma. Please note the alternate rules says that, hey, I can just pick two. Um, so that's your option. I prefer that you play with the flaw and not the alternate rules. So you can either pick two boosts, or you're given two, you can pick a third and have to take a flaw. 
and that would be the way I would prefer it. Um, I'm not going to select any of these boosts until I'm done picking these, the class and the background. Class and background is the same. I click on the class. Um, I'm going to make him a champion. No, I picked the gun, so let's make him a gunslinger. So I am going to drag that. Now, unfortunately, I can't... There's no way to see these. So if you want to know specifically... Um, what each of those things are you can go to the um so like for gunslingers they're in the guns and gears book which i don't have the hard copy of yet but if you go to the archives of nethys um they have them described so for example way of the drifter you are a wa wanderer traveling from land to land with your gun and melee weapon is company maybe you learn to fight with a blade and pistol as a shackles pirate mastered the hand cannon and katana and minkai or practice so um you get extra skills possibly for some of these slingers reload gives me a when i'm wielding a firearm across to him in one hand your other hand either wields a one-hander or melee weapon when you make a melee attack and then reload your gun in one fluid movement. Strike the opponent within reach with your one-handed melee weapon, or if your other hand is empty with an unarmed attack, and then interact to reload. You don't need a free hand to reload this way. So it gives you some special abilities that you're able to use based on your way. So, again, I don't have the hard copy books, but all that stuff you can find online. I'm going to close that. I'm going to click Background. Um... There are lots of backgrounds. A lot of these come from the core and expanded rule books, as well as some of the um, Pathfinder Adventure Path series. So if there's one in here that you don't understand, you know, you don't remember reading about, um, they are probably specific to a series. We aren't going to necessarily use those. Um, so if there's a weird one, ask about it before you choose it. For example, um, let's see. I knew there was one in here. Let me... Uh, Um, journal entries. A. Okay. So all of these right here, Alkinstar, Outlaw, Sojourner, Tinker. If I click on this, um, this is from, um, the Outlaws of Alkinstar Adventure. So, um, you're an outlaw whose first crime was stealing gun from the gun works, which allowed you to commence a crime spree of epic proportions. You don't know where the road ends, but it's probably going to be a bloody affair. Life at adventure might be a relief compared to the life forever on the run from the authorities. So, yes, you can choose those, but um, some of their descriptions is gonna are going to be hard to find directly in here. So I am going to pick, since he is a gunslinger, I am going to actually make him a gunsmith for his background. Okay. Now that I've done that, um, the stuff that automatically is applied, notice I have the three twelves and then the eight. I'm going to go click edit. And I'm going to choose my extra. So class gunslinger automatically gave me one index. Okay. So I get to choose one more. For my ancestry, I'm going to choose Dex because that's my main ability. Okay, I am now have the ability to choose for 
Uh, I'm going to choose Dex for my gunsmith. I can either choose Dex or Intelligence. I'm going to choose Dex. And I'm going to choose one of my four frees. I am going to choose the boost in Dex. So now I have the 18 in my primary one. And I'm going to, I can choose three more. So I am going to choose Wisdom to increase some saving throws. Constitution. Um, and since Pathfinder is perception based for initiative, I might actually bump my Wisdom up one more. No, I already bumped my Wisdom up. I can, there, let's do a Wisdom here. There we go. Um, and I have one more here. I'm going to get rid of that negative bonus to Charisma. And I am going to hit Complete. Okay, now my stats are locked in. And we can see my saving throws are plus 7 for Fortitude, 9 for Reflex, 6 for Will. Um... My initiative is plus eight. My perception is plus eight. Okay, but we're not done yet. Um, notice it automatically picked up the st stuff I have, the languages that you get, that type of stuff. Um, you'll see I have actions based off of my equipment, and then that reloading strike was from that thing. Inventory, nothing yet. Um, I need to find... It automatically gave me the trained in what I was supposed to be trained in. So when it comes time to run to do skill checks, I already have these done. So now here's where we get to go pick our extra feats. Okay. So I have an ancestry feature of my clan dagger. I took the gunslinger's way. I have my clan pistol. So now I can pick a class feat. Okay, so and then um, if there's any others that you can pick for level one, they would show up here. So I have an empty slot, so I want to pick it. So I'm going to click on the little thing. And right now the browser comes up. I can, I'm allowed to take archetype feet and class feats of level one. So what... I can do is I can look through these and figure out which feat that I want to take. Between two points removes an obstacle. You should fire a lock within 10 feet. Make an attack roll against the DC required to pick the lock. Critical success, you open the lock. Or you achieve two. I achieve one success. Failure, I get penalties. So I can blow a lock open. Cover fire. Make a firearm or crossbow must decide before you roll your attack whether it will duck out of the way. If the target ducks, it gains that. But it, if it ducks, it um, it takes a minus two penalty also. Dual weapon reload. So we already have that with our way of the drifter. I thought. Yep, the reloading strike. We already have that. So let's see here. Hit the dirt. If somebody makes a ranged strike against you, you leap, and you gain a plus two bonus to AC, you will land prone. So that's a plus two bonus to AC. Munitions Crafter. I gain al alchemical crafting feat and four additional formulas for first level alchemical items. That's the one I'm going to take. So I'm going to drag Munitions Crafter over. To my class feats. So that gave me alchemical crafting right off the bat. 
And now I have my basic character. At this point, we would set up to have you buy your equipment. Um, everybody starts out with 15 gold. Uh, plus whatever you happen to get from your ancestry. So if I look at my character sheet, this is where you would start fleshing out the rest of your character. Um, gender, age, height, weight, ethnicity, um, nationality. We are going to work. Ethnicity really isn't going to play much in this campaign, but nationality we will talk about when we go through backgrounds. If you're a cleric or a champion, or even if you do desire, um, otherwise, pick you can pick a deity. Um, the ones that actually have the nice icons uh, would be our first choices. So I am going to go down and pick... Um, actually, I will give you a list of the ones that we would want to uh, stick to. Let's pick... Uh, it's got a sword. I'll provide you a list of the ones that we're going to want to stick with. But we're going to make him a nice little... Uh... There we go. Let's just drag Nethys in there. Notice how the little picture changes. Okay. So you have your nice little character sheet you can pull up. Um, this is only if you're playing Pathfinder Society stuff. This is where you will type in the appearance one. This is where you'll, in the biography, you'll type in general description of your appearance, your backstory. Um, with our backstory, we're going to work those out together. Um, stuff like that. So... Pretty easy to set up a character. I think all of you can do it. It's uh, I actually like it because uh, we know using Foundry with other systems, it was a lot easier to create the character offline and then transfer it into Foundry. For example, the last system we played with, but with Pathfinder, it's uh, I think this is the easiest way to create the character. And when it comes time to level up, I'll come up with a new video on how to level up, and that should be good. So thanks.